Hello everybody, welcome to the Let's Talk show. I am Akonobi Atina and I'm so excited because today we shall talk about something different. You know here on the show we don't only talk about religious stuff, we also talk about everything that pertains to life because the Bible says His divine power has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And I'm super pumped because I have a remarkable lady here, a very special one. And her name is Mrs. Magdalene Edo. Welcome to the show, Mrs. Edo. Thank you for having me. Mrs. Edo is a family nurse practitioner and also a psychiatric family nurse practitioner. What is family, family nurse? Do you only take care of people with family or every individual? No. So family nurse practitioner is like a family medicine. Okay. And as a family nurse practitioner, you are able to diagnose diseases and okay. treat, run labs, and do a lot of things. Basically, what you know, many doctors do, but as a nurse, family nurse practitioner, I cannot do surgery. Okay. But I can diagnose, I can treat, and I can order labs. Oh, okay, okay. You can diagnose, you can treat, and you can order labs. It's just there's just a slight difference between main physician okay so today we shall talk about hypertension also known as high blood pressure it is known as the silent killer because help it goes a very long period without being detected and it can lead to death when we say high blood pressure mrs edo what is high blood pressure that's a good question high blood pressure or hypertension we use it interchangeably so when you talk about hypertension you know, the World Health Organization and the American Heart Association, they describe hypertension as the blood pressure, like the force of blood that flows through your blood vessels consistently. So when that pressure is consistently high or when it's always elevated, then we say, yes, there is hypertension. Okay. How is it diagnosed? For you to diagnose um, blood pressure, first of all, it has to be measured. You get um, a blood pressure cuff that is the right fit. You know, if you are like me, you will use a medium one. But if you are like maybe three, four times my size, you're gonna need a larger one. Then we're gonna put that in your hand and then we read it. Those numbers depends on what they are. You have the top one, we call it the systolic. And then you have the bottom one, we call it the diastolic. That systolic is when your heart beats. And then the systolic is between where your heart beats, which is where your heart relaxes. So those numbers mean a lot. Okay, so what are the ranges? And also you make mention of large size, blood pressure curve, and medium. Does it matter in terms of choosing a blood pressure curve? Of course it matters. If you don't use the right cuff, you're going to get inaccurate results. Infants have their own size, you know, it just depends on the size okay. so it is very very important to use the right blood pressure size or cough to get an accurate result okay. also when we are diagnosing yes we look at those numbers we use the blood pressure cough we let the medical provider analyze it the other thing we do we go over histories as well you okay. know are you an elderly person are you pregnant um, do you have a family history of it? So we look at the history, we put all those together and come up with the diagnosis. So what are the numbers, what are the ranges for a, an individual to be concerned that, hey, at this point I have high blood pressure or I should go and seek professional advice? Okay, let's start with the number um, readings. The World Health Organization, they want the readings to be 120 over 80 or a little less, right? Normal no problems then when it's from 120 to 129 we are saying oh you have elevated blood pressure from 130 to 139 they said that is stage one of hypertension then when it's stage you know when it's higher than 140 then yes you know you have a stage two if it's like 180 190 that is a crisis okay and that means you have to go to the hospital right away 
because we have to do so many other things to help to stabilize the blood pressure. Okay, you made mention of stage one crisis and stage two. Are there levels? Are there levels to hypertension blood pressure? Yes, those are the levels. Like from one twenty, like I said, one twenty over eighty is the ideal, okay. or a little less. When it's higher than that, you say okay, you have elevated blood pressure. Okay. Then when it's one thirty to one thirty nine, we're saying oh, that's a stage one um, hypertension. We are not really too excited, you know, to go into treatment when it's still there. There are many things we can do. And then when it's more than 140, then we are thinking, oh, you know, we have to start doing something. Remember, it has to be consistently high, okay. not just a one-time wow. thing. So if you walk into, the, uh, walk into the office and then your blood pressure is, let's say, 145 over 85, I'm not going to say, hey, you have hypertension. Okay. No. I want to see you at least in more than one or two, in more than two to three settings, okay. different visits, different days. Then if it's consistently high, then I can say yes. And also, you notice that when you go to doctor's office, they don't say, hey, oh, here you come, let's check your blood pressure um, right away. No, we have you sign in, we give you some forms to fill, we make sure you are rested, and then we say, let's check your blood pressure. We don't bring you in, take you to the room, and say, oh, you know, the, your lab results from last time shows that your A1C is too high, you have diabetes. Your cholesterol is too high, you probably have cholesterol. Oh, maybe your kidneys are failing. Then the next minute you say, let's check your blood pressure. Okay. We're not gonna get a good result. It's not gonna be accurate. You have to be at rest, sit down at least for like five minutes, get comfortable, that's when. So if an, in, an individual, if you're watching us and you are taking your blood pressure, the circumstance with which you take your blood pressure also affects how the reading is going to be. Exactly. So always you have to be relaxed. Correct. So what is the best time to take your blood pressure? Perfect. Best time is be relaxed. You know, there's not, no worries. You are not in panic mode. You are not having anxiety. You know, it's just sit down at least five minutes, feel relaxed then check your blood pressure. I'll give you a quick example. You know, was it two or three weeks ago, a friend called me and said, hey, I think I'm having a heart attack. What happened? Well, I came back from work at 7 p.m. My son's supposed to be home at 2 p.m. He wasn't there. I called these two bus school buses. They already parked, the drivers are all gone. That's panic mode. Oh, yeah. She was worried. Yeah. Her heart was skipping off her chest. The next thing she did was grab a blood pressure cuff mm. and check her blood pressure. Yes, it was 165 over 92. Oh, yeah. So she was in panic mode. That was not the right time to check. And then I was just laughing. I said, what is funny? I said, because you check your blood pressure at the wrong time. Oh, okay. So if you are watching and you are home and you have your blood pressure cuffs, at home and you want to take your blood pressure don't just go walk after you've walked sit down and relax make sure your heart is re relaxing or resting before you take your blood pressure other than that it's going to go up and you'll be worried for nothing so the environment and the circumstance also matters okay my next question is how do i know or how does one know that he or she has high blood pressure you have to go to the door you have to check you have to check. You have to go to. That is why we say always, always follow up with your doctor's appointment. So, because if you're busy, you are not really going to like just wake up one morning and say I'm checking my blood pressure. When you go to the doctors, then you check. Also, there are sometimes you know you can have symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. If you have symptoms like blurry vision, mm -hmm. and then you know you're flushing, you know for nothing. And then you're having chest pain, you're having shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. You just want to check in, check your blood pressure and see how it is. Okay, so sometimes you can have these symptoms and you can go and check it to be very sure that you have high blood pressure. Is high blood pressure genetic? That's a very good question. Yes, it is genetic. That is why when we do your assessment, before we make a diagnosis, that is part of the assessment. We ask to see if you have a biological relative that has a blood pressure. Biological relative, we mean father, mother, siblings, you know, the same biological lineage. If it runs in the family, it doesn't mean, you know, you're going to get it automatically. It just means that you are at risk. You know, there's a possibility. You don't have to go thinking that, oh, my mom has blood pressure. I have it, no. 
you just have to you know i could be at risk is the language okay so well if maybe i am watching and uh, i know some way my mom or dad has high blood pressure but when i go to visit the doctor and they ask me i'm scared because if i'm going to say my mom has because usually they ask you if the moment i say my mom has it don't you think that will give you the upper hand for you to also say that then you have high blood pressure so i have to hide it do i have to tell you my mom has it before you can diagnose me with high blood pressure please 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 tell me tell your doctor that your mom or your dad has a blood pressure it will just be an opportunity for education okay, okay. it's not we're not going to diagnose you right away because you have a family history of it that's going to make me want to anytime you come i have to monitor your blood pressure and if your blood pressure is elevated i'm going to tell you get a journal you know get a blood pressure cup i will teach you how to check your blood pressure always check it at least three times a week write it down on your next appointment and bring it for me to see so telling me your family history gives me the opportunity to educate you and assess you even better. Okay. Thank you very much, Mrs. Edu, for this opportunity for us to learn about blood, high blood pressure. And my next question is, who is at risk? What are the risk factors? There are different risk factors. People who have, first of all, if you're black, Mm -hmm. and you are a male. <laughs> Next, if you are the age of, some researchers say from the age of 55, some say from the age of 65. So if you are an older person and you are a male and black, especially for male, more prevalent in male, but if you are black, yes, you are at risk. And if you are pregnant, you know, yeah. people have preeclampsia when they are pregnant, yeah. when their blood pressure is out of control. And people who have obstructive sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is when people stop breathing for a few seconds in their sleep. If you are obese, you know, people heavier with, yeah. you know, obesity. If you use drugs like cocaine, some certain medications, if you don't exercise, if you don't eat right, all of those are risk factors okay. for hypertension. So, um, there, can we change how we live or are there any lifestyle changes to help us not to get high blood pressure or to help us reduce high blood pressure? Perfect. Yep. And we have a lot of them. Lifestyle changes you can make. You want to exercise. You know, they said about 150 minutes a week of aerobic exercise. That's doable. You know, even from our busy schedule. So we want to exercise, we want to stop smoking. Because when you smoke cigarette, you know, eventually your blood vessel is going to thicken up and that's going to lead to complications. You stop smoking, you eat right, cut down on your sodium. Remember, salt is sodium, but that is not just the salt we put to our soup or our, you know, our meals. There are also salt in canned food, food, processed meat, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would just call it processed meat, but I don't want to mention some so, different yeah. kind of meat. Uh, canned meat, just be careful and cut down on all of that. Again, avoid sedentary lifestyle. If you are in the office, make sure your printer is a place where you can make some steps to get your, your printed copies. If you are home, put your remotes away. Don't put it by your side, a glass by your side. Move, you know? Um, that then you exercise, you try and maintain a steady weight, you don't want to overweight. And then talk to your healthcare provider, talk to your doctor all the time. Thank you very much. Can bl high blood pressure cause any other diseases? Can it affect any organ yes. of the body? Yes, yes, a lot of organs. First of all, it could lead to uh, vision loss, which is blindness. Mm -hmm. It can lead to kidney disease. It can lead to stroke. It can lead to blood vessel issues, you know, issues with blood flow. And you know, we need a good blood flow to the all over our bodies, from our legs to our hands, and especially to the brain. If we don't have a good blood flow to the brain, something bad will happen. And when the blood vessels that the blood go through is weakened, mm -hmm. there is a risk for aneurysm. Aneurysm is when, you know, 
um, all the some of the blood vessels they they become bulgy mm -hmm. and they explode they expand like a balloon sometimes when eruption. exactly so when there's eruption there could be aneurysm aneurysm can happen in the abdomen it can happen in the brain it can happen in the chest area so we really have to be careful okay we really have to be careful if we have high blood pressure when is medication needed? At what point do you decide that, hey, I have high blood pressure, so I need to be on some medication? That's a very good question. We go, we went over the numbers, right? Yeah. We know when we should say, okay, we have stage two hypertension, let's start doing something. At that point, before we start medication, we try the lifestyle changes, right? Mm -hmm. Not smoking, uh, lose weight, you know, eat right, do all of that. When we try all of that, it doesn't work, we introduce medication. When we introduce medication, sometimes it's not just a single one. We can do a combination of various medications to help get the target blood pressure. Okay. So talking about medication, sometimes a lot of the blood pressure, uh, high blood pressure patients are so scared about taking medications because of its side, adverse side effects. So if someone has high blood pressure, should they be concerned about the adverse side effect or look at the positive side about how to manage the medication rather than because some people say that um, the medication cause kidney effect and all that and they do not take their medication. Should we be scared of the adverse effects or when we are having some effects, side effects, we can change the medication? Well, I don't want to say scared. I want to say concerned mm -hmm. and it is both, mm -hmm. right? If you are taking medication, you're having adverse effects, you don't want to continue that medication. Mm -hmm. There is always an alternative. You can always switch to a different medication that is suitable for you. So you don't want to stop taking, you don't want to ever stop taking your medication without talking to um, the doctors first. Make sure they know that you're about to stop. Yes, you should be concerned of adverse effects. And we educate that if you have any adverse effects, report it right away. Report it right away, we can always give you an alternative. And there is something we call benefit outweigh the risk, mm -hmm. right? If I put you on a hypertension medicine and you come to me and say, ah, oh, I just have a slight headache. Whenever I take this medicine, I'm having a slight headache. If that medication is effectively treating your blood pressure, I can say take some Tylenol, you know? But if I put you on a blood pressure medicine, you come back, you tell me you're having you know, you feel like you're having palpitations, you're having arrhythmias, you're having shortness of breath, you have headache that you are not having nosebleeds, I'm gonna stop that medication right away. Versus telling me it's like a headache, which I can take care of with Tylenol. That way, the benefits outweigh the risk of having that slight headache. Okay, you said we shouldn't stop the medication abruptly. We have to taper the medication. They take it slowly, but I have taken the medication. I don't feel good, and my next appointment will be somewhere in three weeks' time. Do you want me to continue taking something that I know that it, I think is killing me slowly? Good question. If you think it's killing you slowly, that is an emergency, right? Yeah. That is urgent. We want to take care of it right away. We don't want you having crisis. We're trying to take care of you and not to make things worse. If you feel that way, you cannot get to your doctor's office, go to urgent care or go to emergency room. There, you know, when they do the assessment, they can tweak your medication a little bit and they tell you, follow up with your PCP, your primary care provider, follow up. Anytime you go to emergency room, they kind of stabilize you and then they tell you to follow up with your primary care. You never want to stop taking your medication abruptly. When you do that, this is what happens. There's something we call hypertension rebound, mm -hmm. right? When it rebounds, most of the time it becomes a crisis and more difficult to treat. And you don't want to be in a situation like that oh. by stopping. Like you said at the beginning, you said hypertension is a silent killer. For some people, they could be dying. They don't have any sign. They don't know. So you really, 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 really don't want to stop taking your medication because you feel some kind of way. There are medical providers to help you. You can, urgent care is an option. Emergency room is an option. Please take advantage of it. Okay.
take advantage of the urgent care and emergency room hello if you just joined us today we are talking about high blood pressure also known as hypertension we shall take a quick break um don't go away welcome back to the show uh this it's been very interesting and well, very educative to as well so if you're watching us you might want to be putting some notes down um mrs edo uh if i have high blood pressure or hypertension and i am on medication is the medication going to cure me of my high blood pressure or i have to be on the medication forever that's a very good question that's where discipline comes in okay you see people who maintain a healthy lifestyle they are able to reach their target blood pressure goal if the goal is maybe you know 124 you know one of the 124 over 79 or something like that they are able to be in that target blood pressure and maintain it but not everybody can so there are people that have to take medication to be at that target level. Remember, the goal for the treatment is to be on the target. Let's say my target is to be 122 over 79 or 78. So if I'm not, if I was diagnosed with hypertension previously and I don't have any symptoms and I'm following up with all these different lifestyles, my blood pressure target is good, I'm just gonna not be taking medication, you know, because some medication, some blood pressure medication we take it to reduce our blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. So if we hit our target, we don't want to make it lower. But at the same time, I'm not going to commit myself to saying you can stop taking your medication. It depends. You hit your target, you're able to, you, you're disciplined enough to have that lifestyle changes. What did we say lifestyle changes? Not smoking, not using drugs, uh, maintain a healthy mm -hmm. weight, you know, move, all of that. And your blood pressure is normal? Yeah, maybe. But before you do that, I would say talk to your uh, doctor, okay. talk to your physician first so that both of you can decide on the pathway to go. They might want to see you more often. They might want to, you know, advise you to get your own blood pressure and start checking. And then I see people who stop taking blood pressure medicine and they do well. But it's not one, one, um, it's not one thing fit for all. Okay. So it's kind of difficult to say some people stop like i said earlier stop taking their blood pressure medicine they have a rebound it becomes a problem so i was going to ask you that question that if i'm on blood pressure medication and i realize that my i've been able to manage my blood pressure uh is stable to the normal numbers can i stop taking blood pressure medication so you said uh, everybody is different some people can whilst others cannot or or you have to go and see your physician to decide on that right this is the thing with that i'm trying to be careful yeah. not to put it out there mm -hmm. that it's okay to stop your blood pressure medication because you know you don't have symptoms or things like that but there are still people that we are still not very comfortable to tell them you can take some time off your medication like people who are obese mm -hmm. People who have other things going on, you know, um, it's kind of, you know, very dicey, situation. very dicey situation. But what I would say though is have the discussion with okay. your doctor and see what they decide and how they want you to go about it. If you, you know, that's okay. where that relationship comes in. Okay. So if you have a high blood pressure or, or hypertension, how do you cope? not to make it worse in order not to make it worse or make it low how do you cope with okay. it okay so yeah we're gonna say it again and again because mm -hmm. blood pressure you know education is one answer cover another mm -hmm. answer the question take us back to it how you can do is cut down on your salt intake cut down your sodium intake right yeah. like we said we don't only get salt or sodium from the one mm -hmm. we add to the soup or the stew mm -hmm. We get it from canned food, processed meat. Mm -hmm. You want to stay away from that, especially if you have a history. You want to stay away from things like that. You want to move. You want to, you know, exercise. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't vape. Even vaping is something else. So don't do anything that will affect your blood vessels or your arteries. 
Okay, so if you have high blood pressure, or even if you don't have, in order not to have it, or make it worse, or other things, don't vape, uh, don't live a lazy life, sedentary lifestyle, get up out there, exercise, do some walking, and come food, all the processed food, you have to be very cautious when taking them. Um, do kids have high blood pressure? Young people or kids, do they have high blood pressure? Yeah, that's children can have, have high children blood pressure. Have. Remember, other diseases too can lead to blood pressure. Okay. People who have endocrine issue, who have circulatory issues, who have kidney issues, yes, they can have high blood pressure. You have some kids who are on dialysis, oh. so you cannot rule it away. There is something we uh, did not mention, which is the different types of hypertension, oh. right? You have the primary hypertension, you have the secondary hypertension, you have the white coat syndrome, you know, you have the nocturnal. So with the primary um, hypertension, we do not have a clear cause of what is causing that hypertension. Mm -hmm. We can just say, oh, well, you're black, you're at risk. Oh, your age, you're at risk. All those things that are not modifiable. Or because you live certain lifestyle, yes. But with secondary hypertension, we are able to trace it to a distinct Factor. Factor could be, like I said, maybe pregnancy, sleep apnea, um, kidney disease. So we can say it's because you have this, that's what is causing your so this. You have some blood vessel issues, your arteries are tiny, your arteries are swollen, you know, all of that. That is why you have it. That's the secondary. You have the white coat syndrome. It's just a nickname, we call it that. People, they don't have hypertension. They are home, they are with the doctors, no hypertension. But the, the, they are home, no hypertension. Then the moment they walk in, they see someone with a white coat, mm -hmm. their blood pressure is high. Yeah. Then you have some that are nocturnal, which means they don't have blood pressure, but when they are sleeping, that's when their blood pressure is high. Yeah. So we cannot rule it out for children. Okay. Young ones can have a high blood pressure. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned with the nocturnal one because I know that when your heart is resting, your blood, your pressure shouldn't go up. But while I see... It just depends. It just depends. It just depends. You know, it's not the same for every individual. Every individual. It, it, I could sleep all I want, nothing happens. You could be asleep or anybody else could be asleep. And it just depends on the body chemistry and what is going on at that time. Thank you very, very, very much. We are so excited. I'm happy that you came today for us to have this discussion. Before we conclude, could you take us through just a rundown, run through all the important things that we should do in order for us, if we have blood, high blood pressure, for us to manage it. And if we don't have it, to, we, 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 we hope and pray that we don't have it. Right. Let's start with if you have blood pressure. And just a little bit, let me go back to having blood pressure cuff at home. Even if you don't have a blood pressure cuff at home, you can actually get it for free at various pharmacies. Not to get it, but there's a free one. There's a blood pressure station oh. where you can actually sit there and check your blood pressure. I think there's one in Kroger and some are in CVS. So too. those ones are accurate, so they give accurate readings. Well, I would think the pharmacy will keep accurate blood pressure station, <laughs> right? I would think they calibrate it to make sure, or whatever they do to make sure it is reading accurate. I'm not saying to depend on that. I'm just saying, if you're feeling somehow, you know, you're having these headaches, sharpness of breath, chest pain, you go to Kroger, that's opportunity. And if you have one at home, that's even better. And whenever you check your blood pressure, write it down and take it to, with you to the doctors for, um, for review. Then you say, what can we do if we have blood pressure, you know, general overview? I say take your medication, please. Comply with your medication. Keep your appointments. Don't be like my friend who responded to me that I'm not going to go to the hospital because when you go in, they are going to say there is something. They want your insurance money. It's, that's not the case. That's not the case. You want to go in and check things out. It is beneficial. Keep all your appointments. Take your medicine. Live a healthy lifestyle. We've mentioned that over and over, the different things that we can do. Exercise, try to eat right, and 
um, try not to be overweight, try not to be obese, you know, just do everything you can. And if you don't have it, that's even better. You don't want to have it. That means you're going to live right. You know, do not smoke, do not do drugs, especially cocaine, you know. Um, avoid things that will affect your kidney. Avoid things that will cause you to have high blood sugar. Things that will trigger you, you stay away from it. And then take care of yourself. Self-care is very important. Take care of yourself. And, and when I say don't drink alcohol, I'm not saying never drink anything at all. Whatever you do, do it in moderation. Don't make alcohol like a daily tea kind of drinking. If you get a glass of wine, you know, maybe twice a week, that's fine. That's fine, but okay. if it's like you're drinking alcohol consistently, non-stop, that's when it becomes a problem because it could affect the liver. Okay, thank you very much. Having said all, having said all that, I want to say to add prayers if you're a child of God. Don't say you are doing prayers and not doing orthodox medication. As, uh, combine the two and uh, you shall be fine. Thank you for your time. Thank you for staying with us and take good care of yourself. I shall see you some other time. Bye-bye.